go ahead and apply the material 1060 alloy is a is an aluminum alloy so how do we create these parts what we're doing is creating these from one of the practice CSWA exams as um as a um as a there we go it's a little better um we're creating these from a CSWA exam part as an example of what it should look like so uh, I'm going to recreate this real quick so the base part is going to be uh, easiest to create as probably something like the beginning of a centerline rectangle all right so centerline rectangle uh, we're going to have a couple v notches in at the top and the bottom and realistically what we can even focus on is this one is um there we go uh this one is we've got things going on multiple screens over here i have to reset this as the active window um, you can even focus on because of this particular examples kind extrusion nature what you will find is you can actually do half of the dimensions um, that saves a little bit of time not necessarily tons and tons and tons of time um, but it can save a little bit so for the purposes of just demonstration we'll show what that looks like um, you can't just automatically assume that those are going to be things um, a lot of times they're going to be asymmetrical and that's something that you'll want to sort of keep in mind because um, there's a couple dimensions that they don't really specify so this is just the base extrusion um, i'm getting the rough geometry set up and then we'll be in good shape since that one is also a mirror uh, because of how they've set up the geometry very kindly we have an overall dimension so this is 60 not bad sort of close this whole dimension is also 60 so actually 30 this dimension here being 24 this dimension being 24 so they made everything nice and symmetrical which i think they stopped doing at some point so a whole bunch of reasons why they aren't doing that anymore uh let's see they give a depth yep of six in that drawing um <laughs> this is an angle of 50 pretty close it's almost like i know what i'm doing almost uh this distance here 20 again almost like i know what i'm doing 20 there we are um and we've got the key features replicated aside from that distance here being 20 there we go well done all right I'm going to cut the unnecessary here um, so I'm not going to be focused on full definition exactly for the sake of just getting you guys through the key details here. Um, some of these get uh, trimmed in terms of total dimensions. So uh, that one needs a little more definition the overall distance OK, 
Okay. This distance here, that needs to be centered. That one actually is going to be, uh, that's one of my keys, there we go. Centered right at 10. Then we're gonna do these cute little mirror entities and we're gonna mirror those about our center line to get our detail. We're gonna trim out the unnecessary component here. We have an over definition, which technically is okay uh, for the purposes of this. So now I think, for instance, this one becomes unnecessary. Um, yeah, there's a couple other details. All right, so anyway, this, we can now do another mirror entities and we're gonna do, we're gonna do a quick, oh, it won't let me copy all within, okay. So can't go super duper fast, but fast enough. Um, when you have multiple layers of sketches, it will let you pick. Um, and there's a couple other things that I could be doing to shave off, you know, seconds here and there. I just wanted you guys to see an actual live approach. Okay. Do an extrude. What's our overall length? 100 blind extrude. All right. Part one done. Okay, so part one is done with all our key features. Uh, this one I will save as seven part one. Okay, now we're going to go new part. Slowest part of the whole process usually is loading a new part. So this one, fine, I'll do front plane. Uh, we are going to have a couple features. Um, <laughs> easiest way to do this is, there's a couple approaches. Uh, for me, I'm gonna do a center point arc because reasons that will become obvious here in a second. Uh, radii. Um, we also are going to need a reference for a center line. Here we go. Actually, that did not load up square. This one does not have the right relations that I want. So I'm gonna redo that real quick. There we go. This should be coincident and all that good stuff. There will be a rectangle on top. Um, there will be another rectangle under the base and it will have some dimension associated with it. There will be there will be a couple other features along that side as well. So there will be another arch. There will be yeah, the line. and an arch. Sometimes the line will automatically convert to a center point arc and really throw you for a loop, but not always. Center point arc. If it would just grab the tool that I had specified. All right, so we've got the base geometry. Now we do a little smart dimensioning. And our inner radius is 24. Again, almost like I know what I'm doing. 
36. Pretty close. Uh, here we have, we'll get to thickness and some of the other things. Uh, the distance between here and here needs to be 12. So actually six here again, almost like I know what I'm doing. Um, this length I'm going to have, I'm probably going to have to break that association, uh, but we'll get there later. So this height should be 36. The overall depth from here to here should be 16. Um, depth here should be 10. Uh, height should be 24, which we know from the other components. Nope, not distance between those. Distance here to here. There we go. Should be 24. There we go. Tightening up our ratio, which leaves that will balance itself out. So this length is already set. Don't have to worry about it. And fillets with all the things. And we can do that with the sketch fillets. That makes life a little bit easier. Entities to fill it. At four millimeters. And I'm going to do a separate one to see if I can get it to cheat. Good, good, good. All right. Then we can use our trim entities and we won't need that. Okay. Um, <laughs> won't need this. All those other details are fine. All right. So we are ready to mirror and extrude. So we're going to mirror all of these things. Honestly, we could do in even a faster step. So this is going back to saving seconds. Uh, what we could do is close this. It requires a contained volume or contained area, rather. Um, I think all of those relations should be okay. The thin feature will tell us if we're lying or not. Oh, yeah, because there's still one line segment there. Uh, that's fine. Good enough. Uh, overall extrusion 20. Then we mirror. There we go. And we do our extrude cut here. So this is, let me go back to that base sketch. This actually needs to be 12, not six. Whoops. Not six, 12. I win some, you lose some. Boom. All right. Now we need to do one more sketch on the top. Again, thinking in terms of saving minutes. Actually, we can probably cheat. Yes, we can. Okay, one more. Now we've got our, don't let the second center line fool you. It's just there as a distraction radius of uh, 
diameter of 12, radius of 6. Features, extrude cut. Blind, change the through all, because I know I don't need that. All right, part two is done. All right, uh, da, 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 yep, looks like it. All right, part two is done. Uh, save as part two. Almost takes longer to save the name than it does to create the actual part. And we're going to do one more. So this one should be the fastest of all. Top plane. Okay, key dimensions. Here we are. Uh, diameter of 12 for the first one. Diameter of 24 for the second one. And uh, we're going to do, before we step out of the sketch, I'm going to do a center line. Um, <laughs> actually, actually, um, Uh, actually, the, yeah, I could do a center line. There's a couple ways I could approach it. I'll do that just because, uh, you'll see. Okay. Outer region, extrude by 20. Okay. Now we're going to do another extrude from that sketch. We're going to select just the inner region. And we're going to flip it to be from surface, flip direction, total height of 100 because I had read the drawing. I know what to do there. Now I need a reference plane referencing. All right, fine. I will use the start and end point. Where'd you go? There we go. And second reference point is 100 is not correct. Um, I'm going to go back and double check that extrusion because that I think got entered as 1,000 instead of 100. But it'll all make sense. Second reference front plane. Third reference, uh, no, just parallel to the front plane. Coincident, third reference point. Nope, not the edge. Third reference point, not the edge. I want that midpoint. Now, if I delete that reference, we should be able to bring it back in. Interesting. Edge one, edge two. So this, yeah, it's not going to let me use that, that edge as a reference. Under this sketch, I should be able to grab that line, but it's not going to allow it. So I will have to do it the old fashioned way. Um, front plane 
and a 10 millimeter offset for this purpose is okay, um, but not as helpful as I would like. So since that's a diameter of 12, it needs to be a 12 millimeter offset. So that gets us up to the very surface. I can go back and rein this guy in because 1000 is a little bit too much. All right, so that's created. We now need our center line. Okay, create our circle. We have a center to center distance, more important than you might think, but center to center distance uh, or center to edge distance rather. All right, now they give you a little bit of ambiguity. Uh, more than likely, what's done on this part is a through hole as a pin like this. Um, I'm going to treat it as if it were a pin so that it is a through hole and I will save this as part three. So remember how I made a suggestion as this should be about a 25 minute part. I believe we are right in the ballpark of about 25 minutes. Um, here we go. We've got now an assembly. <laughs> as soon as it finishes thinking. I bring all three of them in by holding down control and doing a click. Some of the questions you guys were asking uh, around mates, this is where we talk a little bit more about assemblies as part of this. So this part will take uh, a little bit longer. What we need is we need this face parallel to this face. Okay, that makes these two parallel. We hit select to get that one ready. Uh, we need this face and this face to be parallel. And we need this face and this face to be parallel. If we do that, what we've done is constrain it um, this guy looks like I might have, as a result uh, of that mirroring, I might have gone a little bit wider than the overall 80 millimeter width because when I changed that top length, it added additional length to this arc, looks like. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to part two, go back to sketch one, or the easy, easiest way to fix it, if you notice that there is an issue, um, is you set the distance from here to here to be 40. And then you exit and let it rebuild. And then you save it. 
And now, going back into assembly one, it updates the part. Part one has an assembly, so here we go. Now everything is tight and snug as it should be. And because part one is fixed, part two is not, part three is not, so they are floated. This is the dimension we haven't constrained yet. You can't go up and down, you can't twist it around, you can't do anything else. So what you do is you then set another mate and you set the distance. Easiest way to do it is set a distance mate, 60 millimeters between this face and that face. And we're done. So that part is already in place. Now we need to do a little different one. We need to do a concentric with these two. Check. And a distance between easiest and quickest one to grab is going to be another 60 millimeters between top face and this face. There we go. So it's already got the hole at 90 degrees and everything else. This is all now uh, the correct geometry, all the correct placements. So let's get close to our, our image here. Maybe just a little, little more like that. I think that is the angle that we took our original sketch from. And da, 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 a couple other details. Good. We're fine there. All right. So. Um, the materials we need to specify because we haven't specified those, set them to 1060 alloy, then save it. It's very important to save in between each one. Make sure this one is saved, uh, 1060 alloy, Plus extrude. So yeah, that one still has that over definition in the sketch part three. We want to save as the 1060 alloy. All right. Now we go back. Assembly one updates. Everything has all their materials. All the appearances have changed. We go to evaluate mass properties. And now what we'll see is center of mass. And in our in our example here. What we see is we see a difference um, ever so slightly compared to what we have here. Anyone know why? So these are our choices. Let's see if you guys can figure out why. Um, for the curves, most of them you can do fillets. Um, tangent curves can work, but it's a whole lot easier to do a sketch fillet and get control. So we're comparing center of mass here with this data. Because if you were taking the exam and you just did this, you would go, hmm. I don't have a minus 88 anywhere. The minus 48 is kind of close, sort of. Okay, the Y being 10, no. So this is the point at which you would look at your answers and go, uh, mm, I don't know. Now you're back to guessing. Uh, the thing to notice, I haven't seen anybody spot it in the chat. The thing to notice, is the origin here is set this way, specifically with minus x, minus y. So positive x, positive y, positive z is where the origin is set. So um, we look at this and we go, hmm, do we have any way to address that? Is there anything that we can do here? to make a difference. And there 
is something that you can do, um, but it's not one that you've seen a whole lot yet. So let's take a look here. And it's not under mass properties. It's not under a design study. This is under reference, new coordinate system. So in the assembly, I was looking for this because I, I don't have it in my quick menu in the assembly window because reasons. So if we actually pick this corner and we say, oh, but we got to pay attention to what's in that drawing, which is here. Uh, we got to we've got to have Z this way. So Z axis. Uh, let's see if I'm actually hitting. So Z axis, they've got Z axis is positive, but we actually need a rotation here of the x-axis. Um, so x-axis needs to shift by 90 degrees. No, that is rotation about the x-axis. So we need y-axis rotation of 90 degrees. Nope, we need x needs to be 180, no. Um, X needs to be, let's see, 270 with Y at 90 degrees. No, because we need X. We need X to be, these are where they're a little bit, a little bit challenging to get it in the correct orientation. Let me go back to zero because our Z is rotated. We've now got Y. I've got Y opposite of what it needs to be. So I need this one to be Uh, y, nope, Z, I need exactly inverted of that. That did not invert Z. Z two seventy. Okay, there we go. So Y of two seventy is the correct orientation 
for this z x in red positive y vertical all right so with the alternate coordinate system now we go back to evaluate the mass properties and report the coordinates relative to coordinate system one that we added and now the confusion should melt away as we see where we ought to be so x 30 y 40.44 z minus 53.82 so the difference in the 40.44 versus um 40.16 here is going to be the depth of that cut so i'm going to go make a change and then show what that difference is in part three and overall mass properties here we go this i am now going to alter cut extrude so instead of a through all, we're going to do a blind and we're going to do just a 10 millimeter depth and show what that does to make a difference in our geometry. All right. We're going to save that part. This is one of those ambiguities. So this will now reevaluate mass properties become uh, this one still has. OK, that has the depth cut now, um, so that's slightly different. OK, so the part did update. Um, interestingly, the mass didn't change that much. So the coordinates are still very similar. The Z dropped down a little bit farther. Um, but you would still be able to tell even with that minor difference. So there's something, something to do with the overall height of the system that is minorly different with my part than what they generated. But it gives you a pretty good sense based on that alternate coordinate system uh, what the correct values are so um, that at least gives you a really good idea that uh, there is clearly one correct answer here which is d and there's a bunch of others that are close that if you had the axes flipped the wrong way you would see these same numbers and if you had it flipped opposite it would literally look like minus 30 uh, minus 40 and then plus 50 but this is the correct orientation per the drawing a lot of people would have failed this part because of that specific detail so um, that took the longest out of everything um, and again that's a good thing for you guys to practice is putting in uh, reference coordinate systems you may need to know them uh, for the CSWA in fact it's very highly likely so I'm going to pause the recording there and check for any clarification that's needed one final constraint that we want to be able to keep in mind is when we're doing these mates um, you occasionally We'll want to do an angle between, for instance, an axis and an edge. And you can do it as an anti alignment, or you can do it as an alignment. Um, Sometimes you need a reference entity, much of the time you don't, but you want to make use of your reference geometries in this way. And if it were, say, 150 degree rotation to put it here, 
and that's what you needed, you could set that by uh, these constraints. Now you'll see that this can't be moved. It can't can't do anything. So even though the part is still floated, it's now fixed in all the cylindrical axes. So rotation, um, vertical and horizontal movement. So it's now fully constrained. So no part of this now can move in any capacity. You can't do anything with it. Um, even if you were to uh, float this part, um, the whole object would move. You wouldn't be able to rotate and move parts independently. So just something to note as you guys uh, are, are getting to know these, these mates and these processes. So something to keep in mind. Um, sometimes you're asked to move parts to a couple different positions and then take the center of mass off of those. Uh, just depends. So you want to make good friends with the evaluate tab. And we'll see that here again, minor difference in the 4055. Um, so I will real quick do one final thing. I will go back to making this cut extrude a through all. I will save the part. We will go back to this. And in our drawing, one of the other things that's not precisely constrained is the exact rotation of this. So they have 40.16. So let's see now that we have the through hole again. 40.55. Let's change that angle. There we go. So if we set it to zero degrees, maybe we'll set it just slightly lower, like five degrees and see what that does. It's very interesting, even with the adjustments and re-enabling. Okay, we've got our 53.86 back. We had a 53.82. So we were able to make a revision to this. That's very interesting. So if we take that back to zero degrees, take that back to zero degrees, yeah, we'll resave it and check our mass properties. So yeah, we're we're in the right ballpark. Um, there's some minor variance for uh, probably one of the dimensions here that isn't specified exactly, exactly the same as what they did, um, but we're still pretty close within range or they may have made a minor change in this side and cut away just a hair more material. Um, it's hard to say exactly. Um, the XYZ coordinate system, because of how I had to put the part in, um, turned out to be Y was a 270 degree rotation, which brings the origin around. So it's, it's rotating about the Y axis, uh, which is what I was trying to do, but it wasn't cooperating quite the way I thought it should in my currently under caffeinated state. So 
rotating about the y-axis 270 degrees gives us the orientation that we're looking for in the coordinate system. All right. Other questions? I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this because we are pretty much done with technique.